All right, welcome back to the series. I have literally just uh, stopped the recording of the last video so I can go ahead and get it uploaded. Uh, that was last week's video from your point of view. Uh, it's uh, just a minute or two later by my uh, recollection, so I haven't even clicked off this window. We're going to pick up literally exactly where we left off at. We just installed and updated our first time, and we are now on a clean and fresh version of Fedora 42. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade it to 43, which has not been released yet. It's actually the testing version. Let's get started. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and click this slider and tell this not to show it anymore. I'm going to click OK. You can go ahead and go through that if you want. It's completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and get our terminal open here. And we will go ahead and get this process started. For those of you who are curious, let me just go ahead and open Firefox here real quick. I'll show you where this information is at. Ow. Just stop interrupting me. I hate that. I can't stand it when they do that. Upgrade Fedora. 42 to Fedora 43. And we're actually going to follow the AI's suggestion here. Okay. We're just going to we're going to do all of these steps exactly. However, where AI is getting that information from is from Fedora itself. I'm going to open this in a new tab. Maximize that. So we're going to follow through here because it's easier. However, it's getting the information directly from Fedora, where you can see the same steps. You do need to do an upgrade, refresh, change the release version, etc., etc. This also goes into a little bit more detail, and also it's worthy of note that down here, this is just telling you that starting with Fedora 41, DNF 5 is used. You do not explicitly have to say DNF 5. It, it works just fine. You can choose different DNF versions, but that's for a future video, and I'll explain that a little further. After you do your upgrade, it's also noteworthy that there are optional post-upgrade tasks that you can do. These are optional by definition. We will not be covering these optional steps in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move this over to here, and we're gonna move this over to here. And basically, as I've said before, you don't just want to blindly copy and paste off the internet unless you really like trashing your system and letting other people take control over it. So I will explain as we go through. The very first step is to make sure you back up all of your data. Actually, absolutely have everything backed up. In our example here, we don't have any new data. This install is only about five minutes old. So we're going to go ahead and copy this first line here and paste it and again you know what sudo does dnf is the package manager we're going to upgrade and then we're going to also do this refresh which forces it to go ahead and update and by forcing it to update i mean it actually pulls in all the new package managers and it, and it does its whole thing and I'll notice it says there's nothing to do again that's because we're already up to date uh, the installation is only five minutes old. If, however, you are have had 42 installed for a while and you need to update, this is the first step you do is to make sure your system is completely up to date. Okay, and so the next step right here is this, this is to, to install the system upgrade plugin. Now, I've since like 40 or 41, I've not had to install this plugin. It comes already pre-installed. However, there's absolutely no harm in trying to install it anyway. It should say that it's already installed just like that. Step four is we're going to download packages for Fedora 43. And the way we do that is we change the release version. That's what this dash dash release verb means. Is currently our release version is 42, so we're going to increment that up to 43. And we'll just go ahead and let that run. 
Notice how it changed the, let me scroll back up here a little bit. If it lets me scroll that far, looks like there's now. Anyway, it now pulls from the Fedora 43 repositories, not the 42. But this is a list of everything it's going to do. It's installing 50 packages, upgrading 2,213, replacing 2,259, downgrading 38 packages for the total of 2 gigs of download. And at the end of this operation, you will end up with 425 extra megabytes of storage being used. We're going to go ahead and hit yes, and we're going to let it do its thing. It's got to download 2,301 packages. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pause, and we will see you in a few minutes. Okay, and just like with the other updates, it's actually going to want to replace some of the keys. So we need to make sure we click yes, enter, and it might do this a couple times. So we'll give it a second and see if it does it again. Notice this key here is for Fedora 43, though. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Okay, that was quick. Apparently, that was the end of it. So um, for reasons that will be discussed in a future video, this transaction is stored to be performed offline. Run this command here to reboot the transaction. To cancel, you can use this other command to reverse the process. Again, we don't have to do DNF5. It automatically, re it's, that's its default. It defaults to 5. So offline reboot. L clears the screen so we can do that however we're going to change things up just a little bit instead of doing an offline reboot what we're going to do is we're going to do a system upgrade reboot put in our password the system will now reboot to upgrade to release version 43 is this okay Yes, and it's going to reboot. I will be right back. Okay, I'm still going to pause this again here in a second. However, I just wanted to note that this is now upgrading, as you can see on the screen. It's upgrading the system. Do not turn off your computer. If you're coming from Windows, this looks very familiar to you. It's the exact same context that if you're upgrading Windows, you don't want to turn off your computer in the middle of the upgrade. Also, I'd like to take this time to explain the, the difference between the offline uh, the offline re reboot and the uh, system upgrade reboot. They they're basically are going to do the same thing. It's just the target comes from a different uh, different place. Since we used the DNF plugin system upgrade, we're going to continue to use that. That's why we use the system dash upgrade. Now the offline reboot works very similar to that. It is technically different, but it works basically the same. And the offline reboot basically will trigger this exact same thing to happen. But it's just telling the offline reboot tells Linux that, hey, next time you reboot, I want you to perform this other task. That's all it's doing. The only reason, again, like I said, um, that we use the system dash upgrade is because we were using the upgrade tool. So that's the only that's the only difference. OK, so here we are back at the login screen. And uh, just so you know, I have not taken a look at 43 yet. I don't know what it looks like. You're actually following me along on this adventure. And I can already tell you that it changed the background wallpaper to a different default from the 42. So let's go ahead and log in and we can learn together, I guess. So I better put my glasses on first. There we go. I can actually see the keys now. So first login. Awesome. That actually looks pretty cool. A little dated, but pretty cool. So the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to open our console and we're going to make sure that we are fully updated to DNF upgrade. Notice we're on 43. And this is exactly why we make sure we're upgraded. Even though we just did a system update from 42 to 43, we already have 100 packages that need to be upgraded. So yes, and hit enter. And while this is downloading the 102 packages, again, this is part of the difference between an LTS version of Linux and a non-LTS version of Linux. 
non-LTS versions of Linux will end up getting updated far more often than LTS versions. LTS version updates are limited to bug fixes, uh, security patches, that kind of thing. You will not get any new features. With a non-LTS, you will. Uh, so you'll find yourself upgrading and updating more often if you choose a non-LTS. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish. Uh, that's just the 205 packages it had to download. Now it's got to actually install them. So I'll see you in a minute. Apparently I can't read. It's already done. So let's go ahead and reboot this. And we'll let that reboot. I'll let it, I'm just going to let it carry on out. If you like these videos and like to see more like it, make sure you click like, subscribe. This is video number two in a series. Uh, video one will be, uh, was already out last week. Um, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can read this or not. Unfortunately, I can't change the font size here. But this very top line says kernel 6.17.0-0, release candidate 6. That's how close to upstream we are with Fedora. Uh, the... 42 version that was installed originally is 6.14 then we upgraded to 6.16.7 then we upgraded to Fedora 43 which comes with kernel 6.17 and the reason why we're running release candidates currently is because Fedora 43 is actually the testing version of Fedora it hasn't been released yet uh, we're about a month out it should be released sometime in the middle of October um, I should have this video playlist still going by that time. So we'll go ahead and um, it's done rebooting. So we'll go ahead and log back in. Okay, so now that we're done there, let's go ahead and look around a little bit. Of course, you still have your discovery or software center. Um, if you watch my videos, I very seldom go in here. Um, but you can install a lot of the popular packages and that kind of thing from here so you don't have to memorize how to do it from the command line. The only reason why I do it from the command line is because it's the most popular, I'm sorry, the most powerful interface on, on the computer. It is Linux itself. Linux is nothing but a kernel, but to get it to work you have to put a bootloader on it like, like Grub. And to be able to interact with it, you have to put uh, utilities on it you have, or a tool chain on it so you can issue commands inside a terminal. Those three components is all that's required to be Linux. On top of Linux, you get the graphical user interface. That's on top of Linux. So the command line interface will always be more popular, or more powerful. I don't know why I keep saying the word popular. The graphical interface is more popular. Uh, but anyway, that's why you you hear people say that you need to know the command lines and the terminals because it's while it's a true statement, generally speaking, Linux is getting to where you don't really need to lean on it as heavy as you used to. So with that said, let's go ahead and get rid of that because that doesn't look like it's changed. And this one you hear, uh, this looks like it's the same as 42 also. Let's go ahead and see what... Uh, what we have on deck though about the system we're using plasma 6.4.4 kde framework 6.17.0 cute version 6.9.2 on kernel 6.17.0-0 rc6 uh, we are using uh, wayland instead of x and of course this system is the same system i use in pretty much every single video in my entire library so we'll go ahead and conclude the video there, 14 minutes. If you like these videos, like to see more, make sure you click like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.